Hey friends, uh, today I wanted to talk about my podcast. I've been recording my podcast for over a year now and um, it sort of evolved over time and I just thought it might be fun to reflect on what that journey has been like and uh, some things about it that might not be obvious. Um, you know, just for starters, it's, it's sort of interesting to me that I ended up making a podcast because when I was a teenager, I actually had a podcast right about when podcasts started. I read about them in various tech blogs and stuff, and I thought, oh, that'd be cool. And one of the magazines that I read had a like sort of how-to article, like, here's how to start a podcast. So, um, you know, uh, I downloaded Audacity and got a microphone and recorded uh, a podcast and put it out there. And I won't tell you the name because I'm, I, it's very cringy for me and just god-awful. Uh, but, um, yeah, I don't know, I put out eight or nine or ten episodes, I don't know how many, and had a podcast for a while, and, uh, there was some other stuff that I did with that that I won't talk about, but, um, it, it's sort of funny, actually, because I, I listened to some episodes of it a while ago, and, uh, the, the production value of the podcast I had when it, I was a teenager is actually way higher than the production value for my current podcast, um, you know, I, I prefer to not edit my current podcast at all because, in all honesty, I hate editing. Like, I'm not going to edit this video either, and um, I just, it's not something I enjoy doing, and frankly, I just don't think it's as necessary. Like, I just want to be honest and authentic and, like, this is what's real. Like, I don't know, um, I made a video earlier today and I, like, sneezed in it because I have allergies, and it's like, that's a real thing. I have a body that has allergies that sneezes and, like, I don't need to hide that from you. You have a body too that does its own things. And like, I don't know, there are noises in the world and like, okay, there are noises. Your world has noises, my world has noises. That's what's real. And so, um, of course it's just convenient for me and I don't enjoy doing it, but I think there's also something deeper there of just like, this is what's real, you know? Bodies sneeze, worlds make noises. I don't want to edit that out. I don't think that's a valuable use of my time. I don't think saving you two seconds of hearing a sneeze is like worth editing it out. Um, I think you'll be okay if you hear a sneeze or, you know, someone's phone goes off during a podcast. Like, I don't need to edit that out. Um, I don't know. In some cases, it makes sense if it's going to be like really loud. But anyway, I think that was a big part of why I decided to start a podcast is just noticing, oh, hey, I don't have to edit. Um, I just won't. And um, people don't have to listen to it if they don't want to. I'm just going to have these conversations and put them out there and if people want to listen to them they can and if they don't they don't have to you can decide what you want to do with your own time I'll decide what I do with my own time and you know I bet that some people will find it valuable but uh they don't have to and uh, that was really part of the spirit of starting the podcast was um I was getting ready to leave the monastery and I wanted to start talking to people about what they were doing in the world and just learn what was happening and I knew I was going to be having a lot of those conversations and I thought hey why not record the conversations and share them uh this is something that um Malcolm Ocean and the Liminal Space Agency shared with me is like just recording conversations this is something you can do and uh that they do and um, also Visa my friend Visa records videos and conversations and just puts them out with pretty low editing and um, seeing that example made me think, oh, I could just do that. I'm going to have these Zoom calls anyway. Zoom allows you to record conversations. I'll just record them and put them up on YouTube. And if people want to listen to them, they can. And eventually I started putting them out on Anchor too, just as audio. For myself, I really prefer uh, the video having that available because I think there's a lot in people's body language and just seeing who they are. Um, a lot of times for me, the intention of having this conversation is really getting to know who someone is and what they're about and just seeing their body language tells me a lot about who they are. Um, so I like that and I want to make that available to people as well, but there are the audio only versions available. You know, there was actually one other blocker that sort of prevented me from making something like this for a long time, which was uh, basically video speed. Um, for myself, I like to watch videos at advanced speeds and um, listen to podcasts at advanced speeds and actually can get up to like pretty advanced speeds like I don't know, 3x or above 3x and so um, I don't know I was like oh if I record videos YouTube only goes up to 2x and you'd only have like 1 or 1.5x 1. 
5 or 2x or whatever in the default YouTube interface. Um, but there's actually an extension video speed controller that I started using that lets you arbitrarily change the speed at like 0 0.5 or 0.10 increments or something like that. So you can go up to 3, 3x or 3.2 or something. And uh, I do that all the time with videos all over the internet and certainly with my own videos. And so just knowing that that was available uh, made me want to be like, okay, people can uh, advance the speeds if they want to, because I do have quite long conversations. And so uh, really valuing people's time. And of course, people ultimately make their own decisions about their own time. But just knowing that that extension was available, that people could watch the videos at advanced speeds made me more willing to uh, create the podcast. Um, yeah, I think when I first started the podcast, I didn't really have any idea of like a theme for it or any focus. And, and really, I still want to keep that spirit of it, uh, of just like, hey, if I'm interested in talking to someone, I'm going to have them on, provided that they're willing. Um, that's really the only requirement is that I'm interested in talking to them. But I think over time, there has been like a major theme that's developed, which is people that have some kind of service project in the world, that they have some desire to be of service and they're doing something that's a benefit to others. And, you know, that could be something like a nonprofit, but it could also be like, uh, they're a musician and they make really beautiful music that's inspiring to people. Like that's a service project in my mind. And so um, just really showcasing what they're doing in the world and getting a sense of who they are and where they're coming from. Uh, is like a major focus of the podcast for sure. Just kind of learning more about people's service projects and bringing awareness to that. Um, that's something that excites me. And uh, I think that's another big theme of it is like, uh, how to put it, really getting a sense of who people are. Like I start the, the podcast with the question, like what what's your life story? What's your background? Who are you? Where do you come from? And I really want to know that that helps me learn more about who someone is and put what they're doing in the world in context of who they are as a person. And so I like asking that question. I think um, it's sort of jarring for me when I listen to other podcasts and they just like dive right into what that person is doing, but I don't know much about who they are or where they come from. And I like to know about that. So I ask that. <laughs> I think uh, in general, I'm really trying to put my own interests and preferences and aesthetic sensibilities first and foremost. I am my own ideal listener and I'm the one having the conversation. So I have the conversation that I want to have with the person that I'm talking to. And um, of course, I do share it with the world and I hope other people will enjoy it and benefit from it. But I have to use my own preferences and sensibilities as a compass for what's good. And if I try to um, make something that I think other people will enjoy, then I one, I'm probably wrong, and two, um, I don't enjoy it, and, and um, it's just kind of a frustrating experience. So I'd rather have a conversation that I enjoy, that I benefit from, that no one else enjoys or benefits from, uh, because I'm the one having the conversation, and no one else has to listen to my podcast if they don't want to. You People choose to, and I'm happy that they choose to, and, and really happy that it seems to be a benefit to other people, but, uh, you know, uh, I have to be first and foremost the person that's enjoying the conversation. Um, I think relatedly, there's been sort of a format that's developed over time where the first portion of the conversation, really the first, I don't know, they seem to be averaging about two hours right now. The first hour and a half or so is sort of an interview. And I start with the life story and ask other questions that I've prepared and, you know, ask them more questions based on what they share. But that's really a one-way interview where I'm getting to know someone. And then often but not always at the end there's more of a conversational piece where it's like back and forth and they they might ask me a question or we might share our experiences and um i find that the conversations are juicier because of that prior interview portion where i'm really getting to know someone and learning about them and um i know some guests and some listeners would prefer that the whole thing was more conversational but for me i find starting with interview just really helps um, ground a lot of shared context. And, um, uh, you know, often I'll have someone back on and, and, and this is different. Like I, I've had multiple people back on the podcast and when that happens, I'd ideally like to go straight into more conversation, but that's possible because we've taken the time to have that shared context built up. Not only shared context between me and the person I'm speaking with, but also that's recorded, that's on record and is available to someone that might be listening. 
So often um, those conversations will be quite a bit deeper as well. Uh, but I'm sure people, you know, at, at this point, I know the last half hour or 20 minutes or whatever of the conversation, the last portion of it tends to be the juiciest part. And I imagine listeners of the podcast know that at, at this point as well. But really, that it's only that juicy because of the prior interview stuff and um, the prior shared context and rapport that's been developed. And so um, you really can't have that without that in, in the same way. Um, I know, I don't know, I listen to other podcasts and it does seem like they're able to get there sooner, but um, it's almost like it is that deep, but it lacks, lacks like the, the context and uh, understanding that that depth has, I think for me in my own show. So I, I like it that way. And um, I, you know, it's, it's an aesthetic choice that I'm making that isn't for everybody, but that's the way I like to do it. Um, and that's my show, so I can do it any way I want to. And I, I like leaning into that with my projects and my writing and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, this is my preference. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's mine. And, you know, certainly not everybody likes listening to like two or three or more hour long conversations, but I, I like having them and I'm recording them and I can share them. And yeah, it's similar with other sensibilities. And um, this is just the way I like it and you don't have to like it, so. Uh, but thankfully, other people do seem to like it in a lot of cases. Um, let's see. You know, that brings to mind that, like, there's this sort of recurring image that comes up for me with the podcast of um, kind of a, a touchstone of what the podcast is and what it means to me, which is this advertisement from IBM for Linux. Um, maybe you've seen this as this Linux advertisement from like 2005, I think. And it's this little boy that's talking to a series of experts of all different kinds. He talks to like a soccer player and a business person and a plumber and like a Latin teacher and all kinds of people. And each of them has this sort of like, uh, you know, three, five second clip of them like doing something with their hands and saying something pithy about the thing that they're an expert in. And the boy is just listening there like wrapped, like just like taking it in. He doesn't say anything. But then there's like these two people narrating and talking about what's happening. And they're like, oh, the boy is Linux. And what he learns, we all learn. And uh, that's really my experience on the podcast is like I'm picking someone that I really value and I think has something to share that I can learn from. And I'm recording my conversation with them and I'm learning from it. I learned so much from my podcast guests, like maybe more than they even know from the conversation. I just pick up a lot that stays with me. And uh, I learn from that and that affects everything that I do, but it's also recorded so other people can learn from that too if they want to. And um, I really value that a lot. Like that, yes, I value that learning for me personally. I learned so much, but also that it's shared that other people can learn from that as well. And that's why I put a, a Creative Commons license on the podcast as much as possible if, if the guest is willing to, because I want that to be shared and spread. So if you're watching this, know that um, a lot of the episodes, not all of them, have a Creative Commons license on it. Usually the attribution license, which is quite permissive, but sometimes a non-commercial license. Um, and you can like do what you want that's allowed under that license. Like you could chop it up or remix it, or if it's a, just an attribution one, you could sell it even. Um, and I like that. I like knowing that it can spread and be of benefit. So please do feel free to do that. Um, yeah, and um, I think that advertisement is so cool. I think about it all the time. And like, that's really the touchstone for the podcast for me is like, I'm getting to learn from this person that has something valuable for me to learn. And I get to share that with other people and other people also benefit. Um, one of the things that I didn't expect about having a podcast um, that's been really beneficial is I can listen to them again. So I can watch them again on YouTube or I can listen to them on my phone through the podcast and I get to listen to them as many times as I want. And there have been some things that people have shared that have just changed my life. Um, you know, these gems of things that they're sharing that uh, maybe even I use and think about every day or have changed a specific aspect of my life or a specific practice that I do or something like that. And, um, you know, uh, one of the things that comes to mind, for example, is in my second conversation with Eric Chisholm, um, he talked about this thing called stances. And this is something that he brought to his uh, West Coast swing practice, but really that you can use in with any intentional practice whatsoever. We're 
talking about in the context of me doing Tai Chi or, or dance, which are some practices that I have, but I have lots of things that I'm practicing and learning from. And you can use this technique of stances with anything of like having an intention and, um, you know, in a practice session, just focusing on that one intention and like, can I do this thing? Um, like for example, in recording one of these videos, I could, you know, make sure that I'm pausing enough that I'm not just like monologuing, uh, but, 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 you know, making sure that there's pauses to breathe, for example, that's, that's something that I've done. Or, um, even in the podcast, I use stances after that conversation of like, oh, for example, noticing if the guest says something that's, uh, technical, um, uh, that the listener might not know about or that I don't know about. Can I just pause them and ask, oh, could you explain that, for example? Um, yeah, that's something that I practiced and there's other ones that I've practiced, but uh, I've found that so helpful in so many areas of my life. And yeah, there's a lot of other things uh, that have been really useful. I know um, one of the phenomena that happens there is like, um, in the actual conversation, the guest says the thing, but I don't quite take it in, but then later on, on listening to it again, I'm like, oh yeah, that that's something that's useful to me. Or um, I go back to a conversation because I know the guest talked about something and then that's when it really soaks in is like the second or third time that I listen to it. Uh, maybe they say something that I didn't even notice the first time, even though I try to pay as much attention as I can. It's just often the things that um, seem to change our life the most are like things that um, we can't quite hear the first time. And so we need to hear it multiple times. And so having a recorded version of a conversation means that you can hear it as many times as you want. And um, yeah, um, there have been a lot of those moments in um, the podcast where something the guest said uh, just had a tremendous impact on me, either when they said it or, uh, you know, later on when I was re-listening to it. I mean, another big moment uh, that I remember was in my first conversation with Visa uh, I asked him, like, uh, why do you write books anyway? Like, it, I mean, it wasn't quite obvious to me why he writes books. And then as he was explaining why he writes books, I was like, oh, like, I could write a book too. And I'd worked on various projects before with writing. I'd written various books, but I was like, oh, I could write one on loving kindness. And so that's when I started working on my loving kindness book. And um, I sort of might do that again with something else if it seems useful. But um, really, if you watch that, like, when he's answering that question in the back of my mind, it's like, like, oh, I could, I could do that. I could write a loving kindness book. I should do that. I will do that. Um, so that, that's how that book happened really was talking to Visa. Um, uh, I think actually in that same conversation, the, the conversation that we had about like friendship and what friendship means and whether he and I were friends, that's also been really impactful, not only just in my friendship with him, but in other friendships that I have of just broadening my definition of friendship and including more and more people. Um, I know also the first conversation that I had with Jane when she talked about boundaries and like holding them with love, uh, the way that she talked about that was really helpful to me and, uh, you know, something that I come back to again and again as I've practiced having boundaries and sharing them with other people. It's like, can I share this with love? And um, remembering times that Jane has done that with me or just her example and, and can I hold that as I set a boundary? Um, that's been helpful, I think. Uh, yeah, those are just some memories that come to mind, but there's definitely more. And, you know, each of the conversations that I've had has had really impactful stuff. And um, some of those to the point of really changing my life or having a substantial impact on how I go about doing a certain thing. So that's been really beneficial. Um, yeah, I just really want it to be about following my curiosity. Like, I, I just want to be able to have on anyone that I'm interested in talking to that I feel I could learn from. And in a way, I think for me, I hold those conversations as so precious that if I'm having someone on, it's almost as if for the duration of that conversation, they are my spiritual teacher. Um, I know that might be kind of weird or unusual, or, you know, if someone's a guest, it might be kind of intimidating for them. But for me, it's like, I have this question about something and this person can help me answer it. And they don't need to be a perfect person. They don't need to have the answer to all of my questions or know everything about everything, but there's something that they're doing in the world that I feel I could learn from or benefit from, or just I'm curious about and want to know more about. And this person has the answer to that question or has a clue that I need in my own path. And so, um, you know, in the conversation is a venue to 
really learn that thing from them. And it, that feels so precious because, um, you know, I really think that if we're curious, if we're open to the world, if we're uh, keeping our eyes and ears open and just humble and willing to learn things that anyone can be our teacher, anyone can teach us something of tremendous value of wisdom that changes our life and is a benefit to us and affects how we show up in the world. Even, even someone that like doesn't have their stuff together in a lot of areas of their life or even as evil could teach us something um, beneficial, even, even by counter example of like, oh yeah, don't do it that way. And so um, I just feel like everyone can be a teacher to us and the people that I'm talking to, I, I feel very strongly they have something that I need, some kind of uh, medicine or, or nutrient that's necessary for me to learn and develop as a person that's like, ah, oh, yes, this is, this is what I need. And um, I'm really, I feel really grateful to get to talk to these people and uh, have a recorded conversation. And it's all, it's almost amazing when I re-listen to them, it's like, wow, there's this podcast that has on this person that I know will help me learn this thing that I need to learn. And the interviewer asked them exactly the questions that I would ask them if I were talking to them. How amazing. And, it, and it's recorded and I can listen to what they say. And of course, I'm the interviewer and I'm the one that had that conversation. But it just feels so precious to like have that venue of the podcast, to have these conversations and learn this, this, this vital wisdom that feels necessary for my life as I, you know, go about living my own life. Like, how? How do I do that? Um, each of these people has something very precious to me. That I, that I get to learn through these conversations. And I may not know in advance exactly what it is. That's part of why I start with these like really simple questions because I just wanna start at the ground floor. Like who is this person and where are they coming from? And I try to ask, start with the simplest possible questions and then build up to the more complex questions and go in the direction of the thing that I feel I can learn from. But that only makes sense when I have just real clarity and familiarity with the basics and um, that's when I learn the most and, and really am able to access that deep wisdom of uh, what is this thing that they have that I can learn from. And um, sometimes I don't even know what it is and I can't quite say it or point to it, but I can sense that it's there. It's almost like a smell or a flavor, like, yes, there, there is something here that I need. Uh, it's like it's like having a food craving, you know? Um, like, oh, I really want... Uh, this specific kind of tofu with a specific seasoning, it's because that's how your body tells you that that's a food that would be good for you, that would be wholesome for you, that you need to be healthy. And it feels very much like that, where this is someone that has something that I really need to live my life the most beautiful and fulfilling and beneficial way, that this is some wisdom, some knowledge, some uh, clarity that this person has that that will be a benefit to me and uh, it feels so precious to receive that in conversation from these people and to share that with the world because I imagine other people need something similar as well that there's someone for whom that conversation will benefit in a similar way and uh, I just feel so grateful to record them and put them out there. Yeah. I think it's been it's been just such a privilege to have those conversations and I feel grateful that I've had so many and I hope to keep doing it for a long time. I don't know. Um, I think conversation is just such a beautiful thing generally and there's so many wonderful people in the world doing so many interesting things that are of such benefit in the world and learning is infinite. There's just so much that um, can be learned and I know I just want to have as many of these conversations as I can with as many people that I'm interested in as possible. And of course, uh, logistically, there's more people and more projects that I'm interested in than I can actually talk to, but um, I just enjoy it so much and I wanna do as many as I can. And um, you know, that brings up a point of, um, sometimes people suggest to me to have someone on the podcast and often their suggestions are quite good and I take them down and I'm like, yes, I would like to talk to that person. So I do welcome suggestions, but more and more I find myself um, uh, how to put this, my instinct when people say, oh, you should talk to that person, you know, say my friend Joe says you should talk to Jill, you know, um, it's like, yeah, I could talk to Jill. She's great. That would be a good conversation. I may very well do that. And Joe, you should really talk to Jill and have a similar conversation and record it and share it. Because um, I bet you anything, the conversation that Joe has with Jill will be different than the one I would have and maybe even better. 
um, often the person that feels the desire to have that conversation is going to be in a better position to have a really good, meaningful, substantial conversation than I would. Um, so, uh, I, you know, if, if you found my podcast enjoyable or inspiring, like, know this is something you can do and, and this is something more and more people are doing. I, I really enjoyed um, conversations from my, some of my friends where they're doing something very similar. And of course, Zoom is out there. So there's lots of people doing this. Um, but just anyone can have a conversation with anyone and record it and share it. And you don't even have to edit it at all. You just upload it straight to YouTube. If you want it to be available on audio, you can share it with Anchor. It's really easy. And um, I, I just so enjoy listening to those conversations and, um, you know, know that that's something you can do too. So um, yeah, I would really encourage people to take this path. And, uh, you know, if you enjoy conversations as much as I do, if you're curious about learning from other people, like just have a conversation, record it and share it and see what happens. And um, it doesn't need to be a big deal. It doesn't need to be highly produced. You don't need to edit it. You don't need to be anybody in particular. Just if you're in yourself interested in talking to someone, that's enough, per, you know, occasion and to give yourself permission to record a conversation and share it. So I'd love to hear more of these and um, see more people doing that about the things that they're excited about and interested in. And yeah. Um, anyway, as I say, it's been a real privilege to have these conversations and I'm hoping to keep doing it. Yeah. So thanks for listening.